Hello and welcome to Up at Noon live at 5 p.m. Uh, I'm Brian Altano. With me is Max Scoville and our very special guest and good friend, longtime friend of the show, uh, Andy Lunique. Andy, Hi, how are you? Good to see you, man. I can see you, you through through rectangles like we see everybody these days. How you Hi. been? I've been busy, so busy all the time, but also, you know, day drinking and cooking as usual. <laughs> <laughs> now that's that's kind of why we had you come here. We wanted to do a little bit of a uh, little bit of talk about food because I feel like everyone during quarantine has been so healthy and losing lots of weight, and you know it's really just a it's a good time to kind of get in the kitchen and figure out what the hell you're doing in there. Uh, you you have the wonderful like origin story of you used to be a professional chef, and then you made your way into games, and now you now you work in the games industry, which are like very different very different places, I imagine. No, not that different at all. They're both nightmares. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I spent 10 years in the kitchen since I was like 15, under the table, went through culinary school. And then when I realized that if I don't figure, figure out a way out and uh, kind of have a backup plan, I need to make sure that I have uh, all my ducks in a row. So I went back to school, left the kitchen. Uh, I was actually running an entire restaurant at one point. And then... Uh, after finishing at Full Sail, I sent this like Hail Mary letter to an agency in New York, Sandbox Strategies. And then they were just like, hey, um, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. And I'm like, oh, holy crap. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, they liked my idea a lot about how to kind of run influencer management. And I just ran with that. And they're the only reason why I'm even in this game at all. So very grateful. And now I'm doing this for the last eight years now. Yeah, it's fun. That's amazing. But the good thing is that, like, I, I think that, like, if you were a, if you stayed being a professional chef, like, if you went back to being a chef, you would probably play video games at night, but you wouldn't, like, work on them. Yeah, everyone in the kitchen ended up uh, playing games at night. Everyone enjoyed games. But what happened was you would always play games because you would never cook at home. So right. if I was back in the kitchen. There's no way in heck I would ever cook this much <laughs> as I am right now. Like, and most of the stuff you see on my Twitter, it's just my dinner and my lunch or some random idea that I had. Like, hey, I wonder if this would work. Let's try it. And then if it fails, it fails. Well, that, <laughs> so, that's yeah. why I think that like you, it's such a, it's such a perfect uh, career flip because you can still, you can take the parts of the old thing that you enjoy and eat them every day. <laughs> Whereas like, it doesn't really go the other way around. That's you know? like a really very pagan way of phrasing that. I feel like there's some, <laughs> it's very ghoulish. I don't know. I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> Andy, you're like one of my favorite people to follow. You love. <laughs> one of my favorite people to follow on, on, on Twitter because you're just constantly posting great pictures of food. And it's like, I don't, I, that, that helps these days. I think that a lot of people are sort of like, like Max was alluding to, you know, we're, we are cooking more, but I think also people do get in ruts. Um, yeah. it, like ordering food is, is scarier than it used to be. It's also sadder. Like I got, it was like, I think it was like a, it was mother's day or something. I got, I went to like this five or I ordered from like this five star sushi place in San Francisco. Yeah. And, um, they were like, we're, we're doing delivery now. And I was like, that's weird, but sure, let's do it. And like the, the DoorDash dude came, came to my apartment and buzzed in and walked to the top of the steps and then just like slid it <laughs> down the hallway and it smacked against my door. And I'm like, it's like $100 worth of sushi in there. It was supposed to be like this whole special thing. And it's, in, and it's just in like a plastic bag. And yeah. it's like not a, you, it's, they're not going to bring it to you in like a, like a bamboo bento box with like, right. you know, wrapped in like leaves and, and, you know, dragon well, whiskers or whatever. Yeah, like Dr. Yeah. He could have been like, I've done an entire presentation for you, <laughs> it over, watch you eat, and then like, charge you like four hundred dollars, and you would pay for it because you're hungry and sad. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, now, this food Andy, is the we, thing to post on Twitter. I mean, if you say <laughs> anything else that isn't a grilled cheese sandwich, then everyone's just gonna tear you apart. It's just like, hey, here's some donuts. You can't get mad at those, can you? Okay, good, good. And just they will. They yeah, somehow right. will. I, yeah. Andy, I was gonna say I actually blocked you on Twitter because I I would I'd be like eating a bowl of like cauliflower rice and you'd be like, guess what? I figured out the deep fried pancakes and I'm like, I'm not. Why why'd you do this? I don't want to see that. I actually noticed that I don't see you at all on Twitter, and I actually just assume he, he's muted me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the it's the bad algorithms. Um, I don't actually see I don't see Brian's tweets, but I like talk to him all the time, and he'll like. Will like he'll like workshop tweets like texting me, so it doesn't. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But anyway, <laughs> um, one one thing we wanted to ask you about is like I feel like food in video games has become really prevalent. Like we've obviously seen stuff like Cooking Mama for a while, but kind of more recently, I think especially in in Japanese games, there's been this sort of wonderful renaissance of 
cooking being like a huge part of games. Like we saw it in in Breath of the Wild. We saw it in uh, Final Fantasy 15. Uh, the Yakuza games all have tons of great food. Um, and I was kind of curious, like what your what your personal take on that is, because there's there's all these different ways of like, you know, in the same way that like in video games, there's all these different systems where you can kill like a monster or a robot. <laughs> there's also many different ways that you can consume food or cook it or whatever. And I kind of wanted to just kind of hear you talk about that as, as a chef and a gamer. You know, I've been really proud of what food and games have done, especially in the last like eight years. Like we had food back in like the Harvest Moon Days on 64 and there were lots of games. Like you've seen the Castlevania turkey in the wall and you've seen <laughs> things in the back in the day. Now we've got, you know, games like Battle Chef Brigade, what Breath of the Wild had done, Persona, uh, of course Final Fantasy. Like that was an entire year of food that was just incredible. And like I've seen whole Instagram and Twitter accounts based off of that uh, premise. And then mm -hmm. even like games like Don't Starve and all the Monster Hunter craze, all those games have done this service to food that makes people just appreciate all the meals that you have. So making that, I guess, real world connection to if you eat this food, you get certain traits. And hopefully you youngins that understand that you shouldn't eat ramen every single day, unless <laughs> Uh, so, you know, know that you get certain benefits from eating cer certain types of food. Yeah. And I feel confident that the connection between food and games, because really food connects everyone, it connects us all, has bridged this gap in people exploring what they enjoy. Like food is as diverse as games, maybe even more so depending on who you are. So when you have those pieces of content that are incredibly diverse, you do have a way to communicate uh, together. And I think we can go even further, but... Like, look at Red Dead, that pot of food in the middle of the camp every single time. You yeah. go ahead and have a bite. And I'm just like, I wish you could, like, take that plate and, like, listen to those stories. Because that's exactly what you would do. And I love those little attentions to detail. Yeah, that's so awesome. I was thinking, too, I was I follow the uh, creator of uh, Cook, Serve Delicious, yes. which is another. And, like, he he's constantly posting. He's not only, like, the creator of it, but he's, he's also, like, one of the, one of the, like, the lead artist people on it. And he's constantly posting these. Um, they're, they're stylized versions of, like, hyper-realistic food. And he'll go out, like, a big part of his job is going out and eating. Right, like going to restaurants, or at least was or ordering food, making food, cooking food, and stuff like that. I remember like watching the making of um, documentary for uh, Ratatouille, where they were basically like mo capping chicken. You know, like they were like, "This is what it looks like when you slide like a hot meal across the table. This is how it glistens. This is how it shines and jiggles a little bit." Like, you know, there's this whole thing to it. And I think games have gotten better and better at preparing that. Breath of the Wild specifically, there's a lot of people in the YouTube chat talking about it. I think that did such an awesome job of sort of giving people an idea of not only um, how sporadic and sort of like quick on your feet cooking can be, especially stuff like stir frying or hot pot or something like that, but also yeah. um, just how many different ways combinations can yield amazing things and also go horribly awry. <laughs> I liked it when you when you got that bad food, it like blurted out like it was something you just didn't want anyone to see. Because like you ever you ever see that thing where like where people and like you know, God bless them for trying, but they do like a really they cook something that just is ugly as hell, and they like post a photo Damn of it, it and yeah, you, you know, <laughs> you're just like, ah, oh, like I'm sure it tastes good. Like there's plenty of stuff that tastes good that looks horrible, but maybe don't post a picture of it, you know? Yeah, well, I, I actually, <laughs> yeah, I, I did that once at IGN where I came in, I, I, I like, um, like pan seared a bunch of like, uh, potatoes and root vegetables. And then I did like this chicken and I, I put them in a the Tupperware and I brought them to work and <laughs> I opened up, I'm sitting across from Max and I realized like everything in here is just like brown and orange. <laughs> like <laughs> there was no good way of making it look good. And <laughs> I think Max said something like, where'd you get that lunch? Fraggle rock. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I, no, I, I, I definitely like a Lord of the Rings meal with it. You know, just add cheese. Like I feel like that's a uh, you know yeah. totally way to Americanize it. <laughs> add enough melted cheese and then add the Tasty logo, and you're in good shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's it. So I just feel like that's totally fair game. So now, obviously, there's been a lot of talk over the years about uh, like vid what video game characters would you eat and how would you cook them and stuff like that. There's a lot of video game oh, characters God. that I would say look vaguely edible, and I'm sure you've been asked this question a few times, but um, Max put together a list of uh, some video game characters that look sort of delicious. Yeah, no, I mean, it, I, I don't know if that's kind of open for interpretation because everyone has different tastes, but specifically, these are oh, these are sort of creatures i guess you could call them that definitely you can eat you can eat anything it might kill you but you can eat it but it's really more the question of how would you prepare it because well let's let's just start things off right here um 
there's a there's a, a lot of excitement around Pikmin right now. They're mm-hmm. they're wonderful, yeah. adorable little things that run around. But are they are they fruit or vegetable or animal or what are they? Like I don't even how would you prepare this thing? Oh man, this is I I'm so excited to be answering this question now. <laughs> It's been a long time coming. So Pikmin seem to fall into this category. They're very light. They're very airy. And although they may be sentient, that does not mean that they have to adhere to what you would call protein-esque standards. So I feel like Pikmin remind me of zucchini flowers and like mushrooms. Because you know there's different different colors of Pikmin and obviously they're taking in different nutrients in the area. So like purple Pikmin, that looks like eggplant. So there's no reason why, and please don't make eggplant joke here but there's no reason why it wouldn't have that like thicker more meaty skin so i'd probably Mm -hmm. say like if i were doing zucchini flowers i would probably rip their heads off you know i mean use that separate and then kind of like you know remove what's inside make a small pate but then with the outside i would probably like dredge those in flour deep fried and then have like a dipping sauce like that's pigment and they're really airy like you can just pop them like you know because think about it look how many you lose you know at a time in the game you can just you know they're snack food yeah i was was actually i would I was getting no, kind of like a, a berry or like a small fruit, like a kumquat or a quince, you know, like I was, I don't know, they're so colorful. I thought that maybe they'd be sweet, but I, you, you know, you went, zucchini is another good answer, I guess. I, this one specifically looks like he would be great to zest. Yeah. You, know? you just kind of rub his head on the side of a microplane. The other yeah. thing I was thinking too is, um, you know, this, when you, you, when you're like a fancy Japanese restaurant and they have those tiny little octopus. Yes. You know, yeah. like yeah. kind of reminds right. me of that. Yeah. That where there's like tons idea. of them. Um, either that or like something like sardines where like they're small, but they add, there's like a, a really strong umami to them, you know, like, um, whereas you, you probably wouldn't eat a hundred, but you wouldn't eat one. Okay. Well, That's speaking true. of <laughs> things with 101s and 151s, uh, what about a Bulbasaur? Cause that's, that's like, I, I feel like, you know, a little bit meat, a little bit vegetable could be like a garlicky mm-hmm. thing. Really, there's a lot going on here. I don't know what direction you'd go here. Ooh. Please don't judge me. I have... Also thought about how to cook Bulbasaur in the past. So please don't wonder what I do on the weekend. Uh, but, so Bulbasaur, I would imagine the nature of it, since it takes in a lot of, I'd probably say the same plant nutrients, like Bulbasaur can survive for a certain amount of days under pure sunlight, which tells me that its texture is probably heavy and stocky. So what I would do is I'd remove the bulb and cook that like blooming onion style, right? So it's like a little side piece. And then you take Bulbasaur, it resembles turtle soup, sure, but it's probably going to be really good for like a, a strong uh, stock so you're going to braise Bulbasaur's legs um, probably ignore the belly for a little bit because I don't know how crazy fatty that is like I want to work <laughs> on that and then what's great is it probably has hooves like Bulbasaur it has nails so it's yeah. probably got some like heavier roots because it's got to plant itself in for solar, uh, for solar <laughs> so if I take the hooves you can make great stock it's probably got good collagen so you got Bulbasaur stock it's a great animal to kind of use for multi-use now like, would, you say, would you say this applies to like the evolution two or would you kind of cut it off would you would it be like a veal situation where you're going to have like a nice like really sweet little yeah, one but then yeah. you don't want to mess with a venusaur because it's too yeah. it's too gamey oh, or whatever I never thought of that you know, yeah if you like sneaking up on a bulbasaur versus a venusaur an ivysaur i mean you're gonna go for bulbasaur far more tender meat but if you happen to land let's just say uh you know a venusaur that died of natural causes its skin's gonna be a whole lot tougher so you want to be careful about how much of that flavor is going to be a little bit too uh you know tough so you're gonna have mm-hmm. to break down a lot more and more a lot more you put you put a really good amount of thought in this and we're you you're gonna get a phone call from PETA, i think <laughs> <laughs> i've cooked so many animals <laughs> slime from dragon quest what do you do oh dear god okay so just a uh, uh disclaimer I've already made this menu, so this is why I have an answer for this. So slime from Monster Quest, if you were to heat it up, it would break down a lot like jelly. But I feel like that would go in the dessert route because the slime from Monster Quest doesn't have any uh, any particular flavors. It would have whatever environment. It would take on the flavor of whatever environment it's in. So I'm going to go to the dessert route and potentially make an egg white I fold the egg whites into the in, into the uh, I, I fold the slime into the egg whites and make like meringues and you'd have mm-hmm. like slime meringues. It would have like this really interesting, really light flavor because I don't think it would have much flavor. You'd have to remove the eyes. I mean, I don't think those eyes are probably real. So once you killed it, it would probably just like 
phase out. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably the way to go. Wow. I, All that's, right. That's amazing because I was actually I I was going with like a sort of like a octopus jellyfish thing because it seems like a invertebrate. It like it doesn't seem like it has any sort of bone structure, but right. I don't know but if it would be fishy. Yeah. Like right. is there? I'm, th I'm thinking uni. Uni without the without the sea urchin on top of it, like just it's going to be like a weirdly like just a just really like very strong some kind of flavor there, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people are calling it out saying Bulbasaur is poison Pokemon, but you can cook poison out of most most food. Like that's taro true. is poisonous if you eat it raw. So there's plenty of things we can do with that. Don't worry about that. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, now this this one the what are the 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 chows from uh, from from Sonic. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't know what. Like, this that looks feels like, like a slime, cooked. but with a with a skeletal structure, right? That looks like imitation slime. That looks like they prepared it, or like you'd find it in like a packaged version. I don't even know how you yeah. cook it. I'm looking at it again, and I feel like I don't know. This might sound wrong because it's got little wings that don't do it any favors. But would rabbit <clears throat> like would would a texture of rabbit make sense? Potentially, yeah. chows chows live in a garden. Um, and yeah. rabbits like to go in the garden, but I don't know if that means that chows are indigenous to a garden, like they grow from it. So yeah. if so, then he is, he is, or, or she is a, uh, a plant-based species. Um, but that's, I guess your interpretation of where they live versus like how they were grown is, is very different, but I, I, yeah, we can go, we can go with rabbit. Yeah, I'll go with rabbit because they don't have much meat on their bones. So if you make like a fricassee out of its legs and arms, I think that'd be doable. It looks fatty. <laughs> so if you, oh, actually, you know, KO confit would be the way to go. Because if it's a fatty or meat and you can just confit all the meat there, I feel like that sounds like the best way to go about it. I think I might okay, go that so now you're going to get a phone call from PETA and Sonic fans. This is uh... <laughs> Oh, Lord, I forgot what Sonic fans are like when you cross. I didn't. <laughs> you got to go fast. Anyway, uh, this just looks like a little this, this looks like a little roast chicken. This looks ready to cook. This is the Luma from uh, from Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, they come in different, you know, different flavors, I guess, different colorations. But this one just looks especially like a chicken breast so is there Andy? is there anything sort of equivalent in our 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 current universe <laughs> where uh it it's like bioluminescent but edible like something that, that that glows besides like sort of like edible gold or anything kind of like cheesy like that like something that like something like what i like i mean i i guess it like some jellyfish are can, can do that but we don't really eat a lot of like glowing glowy food <laughs> No, I mean, it usually dies by the time we end up eating it. You <laughs> tend to go to seafood if you're thinking bioluminescence. Mm -hmm. I would struggle to even cook this one at all. I might even consider what it would be like as a tartare. You know what I mean? Because, you know, it, it flows in space. I'd love to know what it's like raw. Maybe just to be safe, we'll make it a ceviche. You know, add some acid in there. Yeah. And uh, we'll go from there. But if you really want to be bold, like if I look at Rosalina and look at scale, this thing is about a foot tall. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. They're pretty huge. Right. But if I stab it like a puffer fish, it's going to deflate immediately. So, <laughs> if I, you know, well, it's, it's cloudy, it's airy. So I might just want to think about it in, in a couple of ways and think of it just going raw. I think I want to do it that way. Nice to be here. The uh, there are some people in the chat saying he's marshmallowy, which is a you know another another approach. Um, but I think we do have some uh, distinctly more marshmallowy characters on the list coming up. So what's would you be class? terrified if you if you bit into an alive being and it tasted that sweet? Like you wouldn't be suspicious at all about what you were doing with your lip? Oh yeah, yeah, no, that'd be awesome. I, I feel like by the time I was able to taste that level of sweetness from this intergalactic wonder, I'd already be dead from its dangerous neurotoxins. Like that mm -hmm. would just be the that would be the last thing I ever felt. So yeah. I uh, Chocobo, obvious <laughs> one. This is easy. This is straightforward. I think I probably know the answer, but it's it's more just like how you really. Well, I don't know. What would you personally do? My personal take on the Chocobo is 100% Chocobo burgers and steaks. So if you ever had ostrich meat, a uh, little Worcestershire, red wine, lots of herbs. Ostrich doesn't carry a lot of its own flavor. Like it can just like easily blend. So you want to add a lot of strong aromatics. So I'm going to go with like rosemary butter, lots of herbs and like butter based it. And you're going to have a nice chocobo steak. I haven't seen it. I think there's a chocobo steak in Final Fantasy. I'm not sure. But if not, they should add it immediately. DLC four years later. So I think that 
I would probably go that route and then pair it with like that feels like polenta. Like so chocobo and polenta. Because you can bring back that yellow hue, remind it of what you've had. You yep. know, it sounds like a really nice steak. I think I'll do it that way. I, I appreciate that you went with that too, because I think like the obvious answer is like chicken, like you know, fried chicken, chicken thighs, baked, whatever. Um, but this is a this is a huge bird. So this yeah. is it's way more ostrichy. This is a big, tough, tall. Ga- rideable gamey bird. <laughs> yeah, if we go golden chocobo, it's a 300 pound, heavy, stocky, if you catch it, you can kill it kind of bird. And then it's going to be really tough. You have to be able to use every aspect of it. I'm sure you can, you know, the feathers would be useful. So when you think about just how meaty that would be, you have to cook that bastard down. But once you right. find the cards in the tenderloin, it'd be good. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo- I love this. You're like, you really, you, you know what you're talking about. That's It's definitely more ostrich than chicken, despite the, you know, shoddy illustration here. Now... <laughs> This is a weird one because I don't there, you know, this is what you God only knows what's in there because, you know, Yoshi eats like a shy guy and then craps one of these out and it's, it's an egg, but, but he can also, he can also spit them. Yeah. I got to be honest. Yoshi is an interesting one because when you look at what he is and no, Yoshi doesn't have arms as we confirmed through science. Uh, So (laughs) the way he has to use all of his body weight and his legs, that does not sound like fun meat, but his belly, I think he would have like really good pork belly ish kind of like he's got a really fatty belly. It expands. So because his cheeks expand. So you're going to have like beef cheeks. He has ever had beef cheeks before. No. No? Oh, it's I, I mean, in, in middle school, but I grew out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I think that Yoshi would have, like, the eggs are interesting, sure. I, I feel like that's kind of like a, a coin toss. Because, interesting fact, with chickens, chickens don't have, I'd probably say, you know, tasting glands. I'm not sure what to say, if that's incorrect. So you can feed a chicken hot peppers, and its eggs will eventually come out spicy. That's real. Ooh. So that's interesting. So we could feed Yoshi and have his eggs be the product of what we need it to be. However, I think mm-hmm. Yoshi's tongue is the way to go. Because you guys have had tongue before. You've had uh, beef tongue. You've had that. I would braise that down. It would be like a 24-hour thing. But there's so much meat there. Like I, I, I'd probably even argue that there's more meat on his tongue than it is on the rest of his body. So yeah, yeah Yoshi tongue would be something I would totally do. Like a Yoshi, Yoshi-like you know, sandwich, like deli style. You know, <laughs> that'd be so easy. I, I like, almost like a like a you do like a, a spam wasabi or something like that out of his tongue, like just Ooh. basically just chop that up. That would be great. And you're really you're you're right about the eggs because he eats a lot of fruit in those games, especially in Super Mario World where he was first introduced, and that causes him to lay eggs. And so I think they would take to that flavor. And I, I don't like apple eggs sounds really weird to me, but it feels kind of breakfasty. You know, well, it actually that like totally checks out. In in what is it Yoshi's Island? He gets like. He'll start getting different colored eggs for all sorts of reasons. Like if he's eating yeah. different an- enemies, that, right. like that. Yeah. So I don't. These I, I would I would eat these. I just would wonder if there's like a different inconsistencies between the ones that he lays and the ones that he just barfs out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually forgot about that because he's able to regurgitate food into fireballs and or you know and whole. Uh, I have no idea why that works. Like his choice of what to eat, you know, I feel like Yoshi could be a great, like, I guess, uh, you know, food critic uh, yeah. in many ways. Like, I would love to see a series on that. Someone animate that immediately. Uh, That's now, true. Finally, the big question he eats everything, he can become it, but also what is what, Kirby? What, what do you, I know that he's like, he's, a, you know, he's got like a life and stuff, but come on, let's. <laughs> I actually, before Andy, you do this, I, I have a really disgusting theory about this. So, um, everything that Kirby eats becomes him. So, he is technically excrement <laughs> because he basically digests things and then turns into the shape of it. So, without actually excreting anything, he becomes it. And so, I think that, uh, I think he's poop. <laughs> what's wrong with you (laughs) (laughs) my silence comes from trying to understand if he takes on the flavor like you're calling Kirby tofu in many ways Uh, you know like he takes on the flavor of what he ever ingests actually yeah tofu and bacon fat it's bacon tofu so I, I actually would say that I'd be afraid of Kirby and would never eat him. He would just destroy us all and I would vanish into the void. Now yeah. you've got to think about tofu. Because then I can also 
Man, I'm a little bit upset because now I'm thinking about making a circular orb of tur- of Kirby tofu, and we can even dye it with like radish skin. Damn it! Oh, well, man, I mean, I... that's on the bright side. We ended on a on a a, a vegan note. Hey, hey, tofu you know is fair game. We're not nice to vegans. We're so sorry. Uh, yeah, <laughs> go that's ahead, true. Fair game. Okay, you you just said bacon tofu. That definitely got in in some in some ears. <laughs> Like a bad um, joke. <laughs> Andy, thank you. That was that was amazing. That was I, I honestly I expected that to be great, but I didn't know how great it would be. You really, really know your stuff, man. I can, you're you're working on you're working on some some stuff in the future that you can talk about that can get into on this, right? The most I'm going to say is I am working on a recipe guide. Um, I don't want to make a recipe book and like you know follow these recipes. What I'm trying to do is make a book that essentially lets you do one of three things. You can learn all different aspects of cooking by learning one or two recipes. And there's like a beginner, intermediate, and advanced version of each recipe. And you level up based on what you learn. So if you learn how to pound and bread and fry chicken, you can now make chicken parmesan, you can now make katsu, you can now make more advanced dishes. So if I just give you the guidelines of here's what you need to learn, and I'm also gonna have like QR codes of like, here's a video of how to do that, um, which is actually working out pretty well, then that's the book I want to make. It's called Chef Notes, and I already own it, so you can't steal it. Uh, <laughs> so, and uh, my original idea was to have it look like the Death Note book. Can't do that. Uh, <laughs> it's like, man, that was a quick way to get sued. But yeah, that's what I'm working on. Like, that's like my COVID project, and I get to release it next year. So yeah, I, it's gonna be I fun. love that. Yeah, um, de- definitely, definitely come back and and show it off when you're ready. I, I like the approach of sort of like uh, unlocking skill trees in a video game and branching off into different paths. That's super smart. Um, well, thank you, Andy. Uh, but we'd like to have you stick around because we miss you. And, you know, this is this is the only social interaction we get anymore. So yeah, we're, I haven't seen anyone three days. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just have you hang out through the rest of our utter <laughs> nonsense here. Uh, starting with um, last week on the show, uh, I unboxed the uh, Lego NES, which is a gorgeous set. One of the coolest things they've ever made. Uh, when they announced that, um, I was happy because the announcement that came before that was a Lego Super Mario, which I was like kind of less enthused about. It was definitely more toyetic and more for younger audiences, whereas right. I feel like most Lego stuff scales for everybody. Um, all of that Lego stuff has been now launched into the wild. There's that picture of Kirby getting eaten again in case you want to see him. Um, but... Uh, the interesting thing I noticed about this is that, first of all, there are way more sets than I had originally anticipated. And two, there are uh, a ton of very expensive ones. So we crunched the numbers and we found out that it will cost you around uh, $590 to collect all of these. Which, if you're a little kid who this is you know, targeted towards, um, that's... That's pretty pricey. So basically, you get the Adventures with Super Mario starter course. That's the one that comes with the Mario figure, right? The one we've all yep. seen. He's like short and chunky, and he lights up. He interacts with uh, certain block types, uh, is essentially able to read colors that he's standing on and can respond to them. Uh, it's very sort of gamified in that you have a X amount of time to get through a level that you build yourself um, to collect coins and stuff like that. Pretty cool. You know, not a ton of pieces for a $60 set. Um, but if you want... Uh, to have Mario really live out his adventures, the basic set only comes with a Goomba and um, Bowser Jr. Bowser Jr. is not really the, the end boss of any Mario game, so you need Bowser. And so Bowser's Castle Boss Battle expansion set will cost you $100. On top of that, in case you get lost, you'll need Toad's Treasure Hunt expansion set. That's $70. Uh, the Guarded Fortress, which is the you know mid-boss between Bowser and, uh, and yourself, $50. Obviously, you got to throw some Ghost House in there. That's fifty dollars. The Thwomp Drop expansion set, which is just Good a Thwomp, that's uh, forty dollars. Then there's the Boomer Bill Barrage expansion set, which is thirty dollars. Mario's House and Yoshi expansion set for when you want to eat a Yoshi or hang out, uh, thirty dollars. Piranha Plant Power Slide expansion, thirty dollars. Desert Pokey expansion set, twenty dollars. Womp's Lava Trouble expansion set, twenty dollars. And now this is where it gets crazy. You can also buy uh, what is basically costume DLC. Uh, and so you can get the Builder Mario power-up pack based on Mario Maker. That's just pants and a hat uh, and some blocks for 10 bucks. There's Cat Mario, that's 10 bucks. Fire Mario, 10 bucks. And Propeller Mario, 10 bucks. So this, to me, reads like what would have happened if um, Super Mario Run 
for iPhone had been a free to play game <laughs> and <laughs> you wanted to get all these costumes. Now here's where it gets uh, definitely sort of like Tencent iPhone uh, gambling. There are also character packs that are blind bagged that are $5 each. And uh, inside those you have like Bob bombs, bullet bills, you know, uh, a, a ghost, cheap, cheap, Bloopers, guys. Is like there that. is there a chase one? Do they have like a box breakdown in terms of? Which I don't. Is no, I don't think so. And so they're all blind bags. Legos experimented with blind bag stuff in the past with their minifigs, um, but these are five bucks each, and there's ten of them. So it'd cost you fifty bucks to get all of them, assuming you were perfectly lucky and each one you opened was a new character. Um, there you can see the Fire Mario sort of DLC <laughs> character skin right there. So yeah, that's $590 wow. total for all of these sets combined. Obviously, you don't need all of them. Uh, the LEGO NES is $230. Um, it's completely separate entity from these. Although, if you use the Mario from the $60 set, who's only available in that set, and put him on top of the LEGO NES, he will play the Super Mario theme song while you scroll the TV. Uh, to make it go through. So that would bring you up to $830, assuming that every single uh, blind bag opened up perfectly and you bought everything in the set. Do you need all this? No. Do you need any of this? No. Did friend of the show and uh, famous <laughs> Emmy Award nominated comedian Mike Drucker buy all of this as something like a, I believe, 37 year old man who lives alone? <laughs> yes. Yes, he did. Mike, we're here for you. Oh, you can boy. reach out. We're, so we're this all is, here. This is really interesting just in terms of how like Nintendo and Lego are approaching things. Like Lego is expensive. It is a, it is a premium high-end like t toy line. Like they've, they have the same mentality as Nintendo does where they're like, our, our stuff doesn't go on sale. Like deal with it. It's, it's Lego. It's never going to go out of style. And like Nintendo is the same way. They're like, yeah, Pikmin 3 is 60 bucks. You know, deal with it, nerds. It's, it's a good game or whatever. Um, this feels like such a weird pivot from just a few years ago when we got um, Labo, which was another construction driven Lego thing. And there was the big conversation was like, this is you're paying for cardboard and a video game that requires like a $300 console to make it work. And by comparison, that seems like downright affordable and reasonable. And then now you've got right. a different construction thing, which is all of these plastic add-ons that are, you know, your, your kid can choke on or lose or whatever. It's just, it's, it's, it's weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, oh, yeah. that's for you to do dad. I mean, we say it's targeted towards kids. Is that really true? Like, I know we say it, but, you know, all the Switch owners out there, I am starting to get curious about, I, I have three Switches in my house, just throwing it out there. So I'm starting <laughs> to wonder if it really is targeted towards kids or those kids' parents. Like, it's like Lego Movie all over again. Like, there's a whole basement full of this somewhere. And although Nintendo is the ultimate toy company, that's how they prescribe themselves, it is something to be... Something to be reckoned with because let's just face it, it's going to sell out. We know that. Right, right. I mean, that's the thing. Uh, Joe Cartwright in the YouTube chat just said, these will be a ton someday, I believe. He's definitely right because the thing about Lego that's weird is that it, it absolutely, it's kind of like Hot Toys. They really do appreciate in value over time and they sell out quickly. And so that is part of this, the sort of whole fervor around this. Um, that said, I, it does feel like a little icky that they're selling like basically costume packs. Um, I don't know a better way to do that. I wish they had just basically figured out a way to sell like a Mario with a bunch of different costumes and well, a playset. set. The, yeah. the fact that this, this Lego Mario, like the sort of base piece is this like really high tech. It's like cool that he's got his eyes light up and he falls asleep if you put him down and, and stuff. But that feels, it feels like, like Lego Mindstorms for babies where like mm -hmm. you're really, the expensive part is this key thing, but do little kids like, do they really care if he, if he, does that if he like you know like will they have just as much fun with just regular plastic blocks like i, f I feel like they could have just as easily done like a, a you know for lack of a better term like a dumb lego mario and still sold all this stuff but just had it been a little bit less like you know that would have shaved a little bit off of the top i think i mean i wonder i mean i'm thinking about my 10 year old self and would have would this have blown my mind like remember what right. mario was to us 85 to 90 yeah, wait, yeah 85 yeah. all the way to now would this have blown my mind like i need to have it i don't care i mean that totally. could be that ticket item and i do wonder if this is something that could work well with other characters like i mean if there are other Nintendo characters coming in other sets and your particular character is interesting enough to build a Lego set, whether it's for display or play, it's not totally unreasonable to think that there are certain folks who just want in on this. Yeah. Uh, what you were you saying in total for the entire set across the board, 800, but if you were yeah. to make this like the Christmas item, that's as much yeah. as an 
the Switch. <laughs> if you just, ex- yeah, I mean, if you just bought the play sets um, without the Lego NES, which you don't really need, but to me is the coolest thing in this, this entire collection, um, that it'd be 590 bucks, which is a lot. But if you think about it, um, I, you're not required to buy all of these. Uh, but I think like the, where it sort of misses for me is that the only way to get Mario is in this $60 base set. And so all of the extra sets are basically essentially DLC microtransactions for the base set because they are kind of unplayable without Mario. So wait, wait, like, wait, hold on, hold on. This is this is this is the opposite of Toys to Life. This is life to toys. Yeah, like, kind of. This is well, the same that... logic behind like Skylanders or Lego Dimensions, where like you got you got this crazy experience where you you take your toys and you bring them into the video game, but you gotta get that starter set and then you gotta get the extra bonus booster packs and then in this time around, it's like you're getting this sort of video game experience from your physical toys, which is, I it's bizarre that they're like, yeah, let's try that again. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is a missed amiibo opportunity, by the way. Like Mario could have been one more amiibo, totally. Missed I know, out. and he would have been thirteen bucks instead of sixty. I'll, I'll admit something um, because it has it has a good ending. I I ordered this set on Target when it went on sale the other day, and I got a ping from them being like, you're you're. A Mar- Lego Mario is ready for store pickup, and I looked at my phone and I was like, "Don't open this door," <laughs> and I can- and I canceled the order because <laughs> I was like, "I know, I know the way I am. I would have bought one of them, and I would have been like, oh, that's cool. Oh, look at that set. Oh, maybe get blind bags.'" And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, five hundred ninety dollars in the hole, and I just have a pile of, of blocks all over the floor. And I mean, you know, I worked at I worked at GameStop at one point in my career. I saw what Skylanders did to people. I saw. Mm-hmm what infinity did to people and it just becomes a thing and you know in the future when my children want certain things i'm gonna be like oh that's so cool and i'm a giant man child too we're all gonna get them kids let's do it <laughs> i'm that i'm that i'm the problem <laughs> so it's gonna happen yep. i hope that like this sort of introductory thing where we've got the super high-end lego nes and we've got the lego mario that is like just way more complicated than it needs to be i hope that once we get that out of the way we can get some basic like just Lego Nintendo stuff. Like, just make Hyrule Castle with minifigs. Mm-hmm. Just, just make Samus's ship. Make Mushroom Kingdom. Make, make the Pikmin. I hope so. <laughs> I, you know, so I, can... I, if you had to ask me, I would have been. I, if you had to say the first toy that would have made sense, I would have been like, "You're going to make Tetris." No, <laughs> no, really? Yeah. What are you going to try? <laughs> Tetris would have been really cool. Like, it's like a, a some sort of playable set with like a big vertical drop zone and everything like, like that. Super Connect Four. Yeah, that's, yeah. Like a, that's a weird one. I'm I'm surprised they haven't done. I mean, I remember when they announced Lego Minecraft. It seemed so like aggressively redundant that I couldn't comprehend why anyone would want it. And that was because I was a man in his late twenties and it was not for me. It was for children and mm-hmm. they loved it and it was around for a while. And I think it still is. So yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, speaking of Nintendo, uh, probably heard uh, what is being dubbed by fans as the giga leak, which was the giant infiltration into Nintendo servers, which has yielded uh, gigs upon gigs of company secrets. Uh oh. Yeah, uh, it leaked assets, um, unused and scrapped game concepts, uh, sort of early early data, uh, data builds of, of beloved classic video games. Um, this leak spans back to stuff that's covering the SNES area, uh, specifically a lot of N64 stuff. Some Game Boy stuff is spilling out of there too. Um, I was I've kind of been tracking a lot of this because it's been really fascinating. People found you know like data for Mario 64 where Luigi was confirmed to be somewhere in the files for the first time, which you know if you grew up in the era we grew up like that's, a, that's that was a big deal to know that at some point he was in there um yep. i'm a i'm a huge zelda guy obviously uh link's awakening link to the past some of my favorite games of all time um the legend of zelda link's awakening came to the game boy in 1993 and uh originally was uh an, a, a, an attempt to port link to the past to a portable system uh that was basically done uh, in the downtime of a bunch of developers at Nintendo, and uh, by working on that, uh, they decided in 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 the off hours to create a brand new game from scratch with you know the brand new assets and a brand new story that didn't have Ganon or you know Princess or anything like that. And they made what is one of my favorite uh, video games ever and one of the weirdest, most beloved Zelda games of all time. But through this giga leak, uh, a user named Long Johnson TE, because this is the world we live in, um, found actual 
screenshots uh, of map data they pierce to piece together of the scrapped links links to the link to the past port on Game Boy. And so that's that's the link to the past map that you know from Super Nintendo uh, running in Game Boy graphics uh, being seen for the first time. Obviously, there's entire chunks of that map that haven't been found yet or finished, specifically like the graveyard and some other stuff and stuff like that. But there's, you know, the, the whole desert, the the town, the central castle, the lost woods and all that, all that kind of stuff. Um, what's fascinating to think about this is uh, that Link to the Past was basically kind of two games in one because it had the light world dark world that you could flip between so the gba or the game boy would have had to been able to figure out how to do that um so that's really really fascinating stuff uh stuff we're seeing for the first time obviously it is uh i'd be remiss to not point out the sort of ethical dilemma of discussing this kind of stuff to begin with because this is not nintendo willingly forthcoming with information this was stuff that was stolen from their code uh and so take it all with a grain of salt you know um and uh it take in this information as you, as you ethically decide to uh, this, do so. Dude, this hurts my brain to look at this. Like, this is such a weird... I mean, I was... This this stuff from the Giga League, like, seeing the, you know, like, uncompressed and unused assets from Mario 64 was weird enough. This is so much stranger because this is a... This is a concept that even, like, predates the internet. This is such... This yeah. is so old and so just foreign to me, mm -hmm. but also really familiar and just, like, I mean... Also, like I don't just get up in those get up in those waterfalls, like go up on that mountain. <laughs> what are you doing up there? I, I I always you know try to protect the company that has their interest you know at heart. I want to make sure that no no one's facing any harm at any point in time because it's always important to make sure your integrity is kept. So you know, however these were obtained, hopefully you're not doing anything you know insanely wrong. And we've seen. I mean, we had a few maybe almost a year ago now. We had already seen the uh that old uh super or the snes playstation combo console yes. and they had yeah. like a build there like these are relics that may never be found again and i always mm -hmm. find these stories extremely interesting You're like yes this was obtained awkwardly but it's always a, a fascinating piece of history that well, i always hope you know, that we have good ways to preserve it a little uh, pro tip is just put it in an art book and we'll pay 40 dollars for it yep and you don't have to make the game just just you know dump out the old files and be like hey here's the you know, here's the first drawing of Waluigi or whatever, and people be like, "I must see it." Um, yeah, here's some here's some other details here. Brian, tell us what we're looking at. Uh, so here is uh, sort of just a close up of the map. We highlight the area and the town. On your first quest to go see the old woman and the old man and stuff like that. The Lost Woods, where you get the map sword for the first time. Um, yeah, if you want to clip, keep flipping through here. Uh, they also found this. This was a, a Twitter user responded to this uh, tweet thread with this. And there are basically Mario statues that they tucked in this game, which is super interesting. Those bushes ended up being in Link's Awakening. A lot of those uh, patterns did, but Mario statues with a bow tie definitely never did. So I don't know what that was all about. Um, to me, it's them experimenting with how weird can Zelda get. And if you've played Link's Awakening, pretty damn weird. Yeah. Next, we, uh, as you can see, these were just a few years apart. One became the other. And what's so interesting is that, you know, it's basically sort of the same model and art direction of Link, uh, but vastly different stories. By removing Link from Hyrule and putting him out on this island that, you know, uh, turns out to be what it is, uh, you get a completely different scenario, but this is this is something that was created in the evenings. Like this was a this was a passion project from the Nintendo developers in 1992, 93, trying to port this game. So yeah, it's super interesting. It's actually really funny to see the Master Sword in the background and another sword in his hand, as if he's like defending the Master Sword. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, and so here we have uh, one thing I want to now uh, has. We have now seen three different versions of that map. So there's the Game Boy one we just saw, the original one from '91, and the 2013 Link Between Worlds, which I spelled wrong because it's been a, it's been a week. Link Between Worlds. <laughs> yeah, uh, you're gonna get memed. <laughs> I know, I know, I screwed it up. It's you know, it's it's in the other world. Um, but yeah, man, I I don't know, I I, I find that like tremendously interesting that that whole that whole story is is really cool obviously the giga leaks weird uh they there's a lot of stuff they got leaked in there company emails floor plans of nintendo headquarters in kyoto just like crazy crazy stuff that definitely didn't need to get out there but some cool stuff too and uh i kind of like talking about it 
So yeah, did, I, why did they have why did they have floor plans? That's like a I don't, is that is that a thing companies always have? It's like maps to their offices. I mean, on on company servers, probably. That's a very Metal Gear thing to have on your server. I feel like maybe I don't know. I'm, you know. I mean, there's, there's, there's probably a map to the IGN office in our server, right? I could draw a map, probably, and put it up on the server, just post it in, like, a secret post, get okay. hacked. I hope somewhere in the world there's a, a Legend of Zelda developer from one of the eras secretly dreaming up a game where you get to play as Ganon. Uh, you know, that's my dream. It's just like, I hey, um, that's a missed opportunity. I don't think you'll ever do it. But, yeah, I hope someone's sitting there and is like, I want to make this game. And like, I would love that. We've had like we've had like weird uh brief glimpses of games where you can momentarily play as Zelda. Um who if you're just tuning in is the is the girl in those games not the guy. Um I know that gets confused a lot. But yeah, I w- I would love a game where you play as Ganon, especially one where he's like sort of trying to be reformed, but um it's like after he's been defeated and he has to it, like That feels like a really good recipe for a, a, just a fun indie game where somebody just totally like just, you know, makes fun of that whole setup and like I mean, most of that game would be really boring because you'd just be sitting in like a pyramid, like you know, like you just he would just be waiting there. But you'd have to like go out and set up all these traps and be like, you know, hire a bunch of like skeletons and mummies to do your job. And then you just go be like, all right, I go, I'm gonna go sit in this room. And the second he comes in here, that door is gonna shut, and I'm gonna pump up the stereo. It's gonna play loud music, and I'm gonna try to kill him. And maybe I'll succeed. Is there is there a final boss simulator game out there? Because I think that's the game we need to be making right now. Like you know, you, you know, I, I've I've heard other uh, YouTubers talk about this, where it's like, hey, listen, um, I'm gonna build eight worlds. I'm gonna staff them. You know, I have a cafeteria. It's gonna be great. I'm gonna wait, but in the meantime, I get to like you know monitor the hero's progress and kind of change it up. I feel like uh, I don't know. I play that game. Uh, I try it. I love that because if you think about like Bowser and the the first Mario Brothers game, he was basically like. Okay, Mario's here. Um, I'm gonna send my best man one Goomba. <laughs> like this, the first the first thing he throws at you is just one Goomba, and then you keep walking, and there's like two Goombas, and then he's like three Goombas and some turtles. And so, yeah, it ramps up, but it is really funny the way he staffs. If you think about it like that, like he's staffing levels. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to see also like what if they're done with that that you know you know in, infamous video game facilities like how do they what do they do with them afterwards like how do, like i went to like i went to like grade school in like what used to be like a massive like catholic school building but it was like a very it was like a very like small school and they hadn't used all the all the classrooms so there were all these like weird hallways that didn't go anywhere and it was just this like this this odd like use of space but like I don't know, like after, you know, like the, you know, Ganon's castle, like after they clear that out, is it sort of like there's like a realtor come through and just be sort of like, ah, oh, God, we got to spruce this, spruce this up. Maybe put up I, some. I wonder if it's like when, you know when, you, like when you can tell a bank used to be a pizza hut. Yeah, no, exactly. Like exactly <laughs> that. Like where, <laughs> like where the roller skating rinks used to be churches. <laughs> yeah. 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 And like, yeah. you're just, you're like walking around a mall and you're like, was this a, was this a Mario Kart level? <laughs> I love to see that in Dragon's Castle. It's like, oh no, we defeated him a long time ago, cleaned stuff off, and Bowser rolls in. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is cheap. <laughs> um, so anyway, we have also, uh, speaking of weird things that video game bosses would put out in their front yard, here's a thing that you could put out in your front yard if you're a video game boss. This is a gigantic dragon that mm-hmm. Home Depot is selling. Brian, will you tell us about this abomination? Yes, sure, Max. This is part of the Home Accents Holiday Collection Home Depot. This is a 69-inch <laughs> nice, animated giant dragon in gray without fog machine. Uh, you will have to provide your own fog machine, although um, Home Depot does sell those. They uh, range between $30 and $70, $100, depending on how much of the fog you really want coming out of this dude's mouth and, I guess, ass, too. I can't tell from this picture. Um so yeah, this is a uh, gigantic uh, animated dragon. It will uh, light up. It, its li- eyes have LEDs in them. Uh, and like we said, it's 69 inches. I don't know if that means tall or wide. Um, but right. you know, this is this is obviously going to be a weird year for how um, in terms of trick-or-treating. But um, we are doing a lot more home improvement than I think we ever thought we would be. You know, people hanging up artwork, taking care of things around their homes and gardens stuff like that so i do implore you all to waste money on this idiot dragon <laughs> and put him on your yard even though he won't scare anyone you'll know in your heart that he's doing something good for your lawn i think 
that's know, people, important. People do that like they do that like Christmas lights thing where they go to like the the really rich neighborhood where the people go overboard and they drive around and they like look at the lights and they go ooh and like everyone's like sort of having this passive aggressive like cul-de-sac contest. Mm -hmm. I hope that spills over into Halloween. If there's one silver lining to like quarantine, it's that everyone turns their own house into like a nightmare yard and just starts putting weird stuff out front. And like, I feel like no one's going to be going knocking door to door. Like, I mean, everyone's going to be wearing masks because that's, that's one upside. But like, if it becomes this weird, like war of attrition where people are just like, that's not what that means. But if people just start putting up like, you know, like this, this pissing contest of like trying to make you the scariest house possible. And then everyone's just driving around being like, Ooh, that one's really scary. That one's even worse. Oh no, a dragon. And I, 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 will, I will point out this is $400, which is $190 than buying all those Super Mario Lego, but um, it is currently sold out. Uh, that said, you can sign up to get notified on their mailing list and you can this at $67 a month, which is a fun thing to explain to your significant other. Um, I want to know about this guy in the background here, this this like weird druid knight. I mean, you don't need to use this for Halloween. Like, You can use this for Christmas, like throw a Santa hat on him. Like, That's a great really idea. Say New Year's Eve, throw like, one of those like... <laughs> Like, this is a multi-use object. I feel like it's definitely not uh, totally crazy. Valentine's Day is done. Easy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, you rip this out for weddings. This is, a this is a romantic animal. It's a dragon. Like dragon. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That, you know, what's this saying? Love is a many splendor dragon. I need, I really need, I, I, you won't hear me say this often, but I really need more photos to figure out where the fog machine goes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I can't, I can't actually figure out what, like, did you take off his head and just shove it in his body? And then the plug goes out of his tail? It's like, like that episode of Rugrats where there's, like, a man inside, like, crying. <laughs> God, I would actually, I would pay $400 to put a reptar in front of my apartment. Do they have be, those? They must have those. They've got to. They should have a reptar. And they have this stupid dragon. We're, we're going to go down that hole, though. Like, reptar, <laughs> one. Let's see. Life. They have those inflatable costumes, yeah. which are, like, Reptar. I mean, Brian, if you buy this and put it in front of your house, I will buy a Reptar costume and like fight the dragon and just reenact that entire episode, pull you out, and think it'll be great. Yeah, I, I didn't and, and you younger folks who don't know what we're talking about, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, well, they tuned out a long time ago. They're watching like Fortnite streams or something. Andy, the only issue is that I, I rent, and so we, this would just be standing on a street in San Francisco, which would be like the 15th weirdest thing out there at any given moment. <laughs> Absolutely. You lose your deposit immediately. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. We had other stuff to talk about, but I feel like we don't have quite enough time to do it justice. Um, I guess here's here's a question for both of you. Um, they just announced that Mulan is going to be coming to Disney Plus as a rental ahead of theaters, and it's going to be thirty bucks to rent it, and you can rewatch it as long as you still have Disney Plus. So you are paying. 30 bucks up front on top of the whatever $6 a month subscription. And as long as you keep paying that $6 a month thing, you can rewatch this film you paid $30 to see. And I, I don't know. That feels like if, if, if three people watch it, then you're sort of getting your money's worth in terms of movie ticket prices. I don't really want to see Mulan. I don't care. I'll watch the old one. That's fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but I figured let's kind of go down. Just I'll run down a bunch of movies that got canceled this year. And I just want to hear which, which ones you guys would pay Give, like, give, let's pretend this is an auction. We're bidding on these on these movies. How much? What's the highest you'd pay to see this movie in your home? Start it off, Black Widow. Brian, ten bucks. Andy, thirty bucks. Okay, thirty bucks. You're, you're a big Black MCU guy, right? Big. I'm a big MCU yeah. fan. However, there are like four people using my Disney Plus account. They're all going to see it, and they can't stop me. So my thirty bucks also pays for their tickets. Definitely. That's awesome. Okay, that, and here's I, here's the rule though is that no matter who's sharing sure your dragon? account, you, the two of you. I love the dragon. The dragon is going to be helping me on this. And the next article is this is a 69 inch long dragon to show off to. Um, okay, so next up, this is a, this is a, a very different one. Uh, Tenant, obviously, you got to watch that on a big screen. That's part of the whole experience. It was mostly shot in IMAX or entirely. Christopher Nolan probably dropped two or three cameras into the ocean filming it. It blowed up a real plane. Uh, and only one of you can see it because it goes to the highest bidder because this is a nonsense game. Brian, how much would you pay to see Tenet? Uh, so Tenet's a different one because I, this is a movie I feel... Oh. Oh, Black out, out, out there. Here. You hear me? Yeah, yeah. there you go. Okay. Yeah. No, uh, Tenet's a different one because uh, I feel like I would need to watch this movie 
really understand, get my money's worth. Um, whereas Black Widow would be kind of a one and done for me. And so I would probably say 40 bucks for this. 40 bucks for Tenet. Andy? $60. Hmm. Sorry. It's yours. <laughs> Here's fair. why. Ten, and I'll go fast. Ten, Nolan is the reason why I appreciate films the way I do. And I have gone back and rewatched movies because of him. So Tenet is something I absolutely have to see. Plus, it's an actor that has finally gotten one of his big, big moments. And I want to support that. Not that I'm supporting him, but I want to see the damn movie. That's true. All right. Uh, Wonder Woman 84. Let's start with you, Andy. Five bucks. Brian? Four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, don't, I don't care I, i'm sorry I, like all right this is, uh, this, this is like the cleanest the, the nicest branch on a tree that should have been cut down years ago like fair enough this, uh, it's, here's it's the dceu you know i don't i don't really care. now this next one is is an interesting one because it is the it is the sequel to a, a movie that was a, it, a fine film but a way better theatrical experience a quiet place part two uh Andy, how much would you pay to see A Quiet Place Part 2 at home, which may not be a quiet place, per se? Ten bucks, max. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, so, I actually, like, I really wanted to love the first movie. I thought it was a theater experience and it was an actual film. Um, but I'm a huge, huge horror guy, so I would, I would pay 20 bucks to watch this movie, assuming it was good. If it was okay. trash, I, would, I wouldn't pay 20 bucks for it. All right, uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife, Brian. Really? Well, twelve bucks. <laughs> this this could go either way. This could go either way. I'm, yeah. Here's the thing about Ghostbusters, though. Like, the, Ghostbusters is like a, a really fun cartoon. Uh, a glow in the dark pillowcase I had when I was like a, a little kid. Uh, a great first movie, a not so great second movie, and then what was revealed to be a few years ago the most or one of the most toxic fan bases on planet earth. So I actually like any sort of like nostalgic history and, and, and linear franchise kind of went out the, the window a few years ago. Plus that movie, uh, the, the reboot they did a few years ago was just like totally mediocre. And so I'm like, to me, Ghostbusters is like, it's some cool toys, a cartoon from a long time ago and one great movie. And uh, it's all sort of flash in the pan and I don't really need to try to recreate it. Okay, so twelve dollars is a good answer, $12. Andy. Wait for Netflix. Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right, now next up is an interesting two pack. This is uh, this is a twofer, um, but you, you gotta you gotta bid accordingly. It's Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds playing a video game NPC and Antlers, which is about Wendigos and produced by Guillermo del Toro. Andy, double right? You get them both together. It's a double feature. Yeah. Yeah, del Toro puts it at thirty bucks. Yeah, um, Brian. I would pay forty bucks for Antlers and Free Guy is. You cut it. You cut out completely. It's like you're getting censored. It's terrible. What happened? Uh, I don't know, I said, man. I would pay forty dollars for Antlers, and uh, Free Guy is going on Hulu with ads. Okay, I mean, you could say that you paid forty bucks for Antlers and you got a Free Guy screener with it. I guess so hey. that kind of works. Uh, uh, Candyman, Brian. Forty bucks. Yeah, Andy, is it the Andy same Man? director? What What do you mean? Uh, is it the same director as the last Candyman, or is it no, no, no. Uh, the new uh, the new Candyman? Yeah. The new can oh yes, uh, yeah, she's amazing. Forty bucks. Forty bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You guys, you guys can split it. Now, here's the, here's <laughs> Wait, the big did, one. Andy, did you think you were paying forty bucks for the whole Candyman? <laughs> <laughs> that ha dude, that happened to a, that happened to a guy I knew. He kept trying to buy a copy of. Uh, of the thing, the original, and he kept buying the prequel by accident because they're both <laughs> called the thing. He bought like three used copies over the years, and he just like kept screwing it up because they're like that that close. And he was a dumb man. Um. Okay. Finally, how much would you pay to watch Dune in your home tonight? Fifty bucks. Like right now? Yeah. Fifty bucks. Maybe a hundred. Maybe a hundred dollars. I'm gonna go for fifty bucks to be a responsible human, but I want to see Dune. I want to see yeah. Dune. If I, if I, bucks watch watch line, I would actually spend the rest of the money on a really cool TV to watch it even, even like better resolution. <laughs> I want to see you, and it looks so good. Um, exactly. Yeah, oh, God, I hope we get to see. I was like that. that I don't know. I feel like if Comic Con had gone normally, we would have gotten a freaking Dune trailer, but we didn't. I want to see Dune. I know I we probably know. would have been able to interview the Dune. It would have been great. <laughs> What's up with all those worms? <laughs> you guys got witches in space. Spices, Let's talk huh? about them. 
Anyway, um, we will have lots more to talk about about Dune because that movie is going to be not coming out for a cool minute. Um, this has been Up at Noon at 5. Um, thank you all for joining us. Andy, thank you for joining us. Where can people find you? Uh, best place to find me right now is Twitter, uh, at Andy Lunique on Twitter. You can find all the foods and all the good stuff. And I'm going to be streaming a charity event on Twitch. My Twitch name is Ingame Menu, twitch.tv slash Ingame Menu. Uh, I'm doing a Devil May Cry Bloody Palace run where every time I die, I have to donate $20 to charity. And then I'm going to be doing Cook With Me streams on Amazon.com. Uh, Amazon TV. You can you can stream to Amazon if you didn't know, and uh, you get to order all the ingredients that I'm cooking, and then you get to cook alongside with me. So that's what I'm going to oh, be doing. Oh, that's awesome! That's yeah. rad. Yeah. Also, I thought I thought when you said you're doing the yeah. Devil May Cry stream, every time you died, you had to donate blood. <laughs> oh, that'd be uh, no. <laughs> no. I mean, I'll make it. Uh, yeah, that's that's incredibly dangerous, Max. How dare you? <laughs> So, Andy, yeah. thank you so much, man. It was awesome. It's awesome seeing you. Let's do. Did you just do that? What's wrong with his microphone? I don't know. Exactly. Mike hates him, but he wants me to do obviously bad things because it censored him out. I'm so we sorry. We have to go because Brian's yeah. cussing and he has the I'm hiccups. And it's real bad. I... Andy, thank you so much for joining us. Come do more shows. Uh, and I. <laughs> 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 Cut him off. He's done. He's get this man out of here. Foul man. God damn it. Can you hear me? <laughs>